Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Just going to wait for a couple of seconds to get a couple of people live and then we'll kick off tonight. Good evening, welcome. If you can hear me, if you can see me, just say good evening. Let me see it in the comment section. Good evening. All right, working to get Sami on board. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. In the next few minutes we'll be getting off, we'll be starting off fully in the next few minutes, we'll be starting off fully. So just stay around. Yeah, setting up so that I'll be able to see the comments properly. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Aaron. Good evening, Bashir Bala. Good evening, Mr. Stan, my main man. Good evening, Arua Ako. Good evening, sir. You're all welcome to tonight's event. I'm super glad to have you all here. Your time here is going to be phenomenally um, full of learning, full of um, great information. The person we're having is... Um, Sammy Matt is a great friend. I'm just working to get him live. And once we have him live, I'll add him to the stream so that we can begin fully and completely. Good evening, Mr. Fahad. You're welcome. Okay, okay, okay. So how's the week been? I believe fantastic. I believe all good. Hope you're um, doing all you can to make sure you're living your best life. That's what we um, do on the High Performance Network. We strive to live our best life daily, right? Because without um, living our best life daily, we're not able to attain the highest possibility for our lives, for what we can be, for what we can do, um, for what we can create for ourselves. So I hope you're living your best life and you're enjoying every day as it comes by. All right. So tonight we'll be focusing on Forex, the business of Forex. We'll be going deep into it. We're going to be um, considering many parts of the, the whole Forex industry and with me tonight, I'll be having Sammy Matt, also known as, okay, his real name is Samuel Mayowa Arukoyo, and then his um, very popular name is Sammy Matt, and he'll be going with me on this journey on exploring the business of Forex. All the parts, all the stories, nitty gritty, everything that will make you knowledgeable enough to make quality decision as an investor, as a trader in the Forex industry. So I'll be having, I'll be bringing up Sam at the, in the next few minutes. All right, Sam is already here. Okay. And we're live and direct. If you can see Sammy, if you can hear Sammy, say hi. Hello, Mike. 
All right. Hello, Mr. Sam. Good to have you here. Hello, Sammy. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. All right. I said good to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay, thank okay. You okay. Me. Thank you for having yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. We're, we're, um, we're on two sides of a particular skill, and I'm going to talk about that skill now. That skill is the beard skill. I am clean shaved. He's the beard gang king. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So that's on a lighter note. So welcome so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That's a big compliment. You know, nowadays, um, guys with the beard gang are considered the... Yeah, you know. Okay, let me not talk about it because I have other non-beard gang members who are following this live broadcast. All right, yeah. all right. So welcome, welcome. Good to have you here. Good to have you here, sir. All right. Uh, we're all pumped up for tonight's event. Yes, yes, we're all pumped up for tonight's event. Uh, quite a number of people uh, in the community, quite a number are even trying to join in at the moment. And um, we're all pumped up to hear about Forex. Um, you know, as the NERA is having issues, let me just leave it at that. As the NERA is having issues, many people are constantly now looking for alternative ways to invest, alternative ways to grow their money because... Um, you know the whole thing of keeping your money in the nera and even if you're earning the nera it's not as strong you're not able to have advantage in the uh when you're buying things from online and many other things like that let me just leave it at that so many people are flocking to the forex space many more companies are coming up um giving you opportunities to invest with them as forex and all of that so those are the kind of things we want to hear tonight things that are very practical that would give us insight on how to go ahead and play in the forex industry. But before we go deep into that, I would just want you to give us a briefer uh, or a brief introduction into the whole concept of forex, the forex market, and what it's all about. So over to you, sir. What's, what's the concept around forex and forex market? Okay. Thank, thank you for having me, Mike. I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, I'll, I'll just go straight to the point and I'll, I'll try to make my points very simple and very practical. Yeah. Mm, so the, the whole concept around Forex, um, just as the name implies, foreign exchange, right? So, but I, I would like to, to be very, very practical. So okay. just like any form of, of speculation where, where you want to buy a product or or yeah, you want to buy a product or services at a, at a particular price and then sell at a sell sell at a higher price. That's that's basically yeah. how, how the forex market works. So every every transactions that every every transaction that go on between a buyer and a seller is actually an exchange. You understand? Mm. So when it when it comes to forex trading, forex basically it involves buying and selling of currency. So two parties are always involved. There must yeah. always be a seller and there must always be a buyer. So an agreement of this of, of both parties ends up bringing an exchange. And so when 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 there is an agreement, you have an exchange, you have a transaction already made. And so every transaction that will be made will would at least before that transaction gets into play, you would hope that that at the end of that transaction, it will lead to each of each of those guys involved having profit at the at the long run. You understand? Yeah. So the primary goal, the, the the entire focus or the entire goal is that at the end of every transaction, there there is profit made, there's profit being made, or there there is some sort of some sort of gains or returns at the end of the day so that's yeah. basically the whole idea around forex so bringing that whole space for instance you 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 get a, a physical product like a bicycle or a gadget okay let me mm. even be very practical let me be very practical okay right now we have we have we have the hamatan season right and so there there is a there is a there is a larger demand for for things that can help you prevent cold from getting into your body, like your cardigan yeah. and stuff like that. So a few months before now, those who are involved in trades like this would have gotten products and services that, that could render 
this this help or could solve these needs or solve these problems. So those involved in transactions like this would have gotten a lot of these products available at a very cheaper price. So yes. when there is a demand for it, they want to sell at a higher price. You understand? So practically, yes. that's a practical example. That's the entire scope around forex trading. So where you want to now put it in a chat, we we now we, we want to now involve the exchange of currencies. Currencies. Every day we have transactions going on, one currency changing for another, exchanging for another. So when we want to put it into forex trading, the perspective, excuse me, and the scope of forex trading, we 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 want to hope that when we want to buy a buy at a particular price, we 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 expect that we we expect that that product or the demand for that product should cause that there will be a rally and then we can sell at a higher price. So mm. at the end of the day, we want to make profit. That's the entire goal. So we want to buy at a specific price and then sell at a higher price or sell at a lower price or sell sell at a yeah, sell at a lower price and then, yeah. and then buy at a higher price. You understand? So yeah. that's, that's basically basically the scope around forex trading. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've played in the industry um, some time back, and I think that's, that's as um, practical as it gets. It's, it's almost like any other trading. It's just like buying grains or any other thing where you, exactly. as you said, you buy, you buy, you store, I, wait for a while, and then you sell yeah. because of the exactly. increase in exactly. price. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you so, know, technology, technology mm, has come into, the, into play. And so yes. rather than going to buy this product as physical product, you can yes. actually use your money, your, 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 your money, and put it into a platform where you can mm. carry out that same, that same transaction. transaction. But mm. at this point in time, you will be exchanging your money to make more money. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So, so that's, yeah. The very, yeah. that's the simplest form of what forex trading so it's literally it's re literally very valuable when when you want practically you can anybody can understand the concept of trading fundamentally mm. it's just all about buying and selling you want to buy yeah. in hope that you can sell at a higher price higher price sell at a higher price and you, you get and stuff like that would you hope to buy at a lower price <laughs> yeah. all right all right that's fantastic. Okay, thank you so much. I hope we're getting this. If this is already making sense, please let me hear. If you're already, already having questions, yeah. we want to we want to make it as interactive as possible. So if you're, if you're already having questions, if you're not doing anything, just ask your questions, anything that's not clear to you, right? Just, just keep putting out there, putting out there. We want to really interact with everyone here tonight. Okay, so now that we've talked about the concept of trading, it is not really complex. It's just that we have technology backing up the buying and selling of, let's say, currencies and other commodities in the yeah. financial market. Yes. Um, sure. Now I'm going to go much more personal with you, Mr. Sam, uh, talking about you now as a trader and your own trading journey. Yeah, how, how, how has trading been? Because wh why I want us to go to your own trading journey is because, um, you know, w what we mostly see online when we um, look for Forex traders, what we see is um, uh, Lamborghini <laughs> and Porsche <laughs> and, and all these guys on, um, on YouTube and Instagram, everybody showing, or just one guy with his Apple laptop with his phone scrolling through, showing you... <laughs> I just made two yeah, million dollars from last week again. <laughs> so, so you yeah. get many people feel this disconnect, and they, they, they really they really have this. What what's it like in 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 real life of a, of a real trader? What's it like in the life of a real trader? So, how has your journey been? What's what what's your journey like to becoming a forex trader? And how has your journey been in the business of trading um, the financial markets? Okay, thank you for for this one. Um, you know, tra trading has, trading has become something that has become a part of me. 
interestingly, mm. a, a very few people, a very few number of who, who know me very personally knew that trading was never something I thought I was going to end up doing. You understand? Mm. I, I, I really, I wanted to be a path, like, like a hip hop, a hip hop, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, um, o- over, over the years, like right from a certain age, I, you know, so, so some of our decisions in life will come as a result of certain experiences, maybe very painful experiences or very at, at very emotional times you get. So mm. right from a very tender age, you know, I, I've, I've always hated being under some sort of authority you get. Not like uh, I, I'm, I'm this guy that breaks the law or something, but mm. I never wanted to just be this guy who just sit under a higher authority where someone will have to tell me, go and do this, do that, do this, do this. I I mm. really love my time. Like, I mm. really, really love time. So, you know, and so getting towards the the end of my 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 undergraduate school, undergraduate study, I I started to see the need that the the times have changed. We were getting into an era where, you know, as at the time we were getting into school, we, we chose our 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 the courses we wanted to study. We we chose those courses based on the present success that were available at that time. Mm. But yeah. when it was five years later, we saw that things had changed. You understand? Mm. It was a transition. So if we had been able to see further at that time, we would have been able to make better choices. You get so yeah. I I you get so at some point personally, I when when I got to my 300 level, I knew that education for me not 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 really education now my course the course i was i was studying wasn't going to take me to anywhere so at that point in time i want to find your trouble what course did you study (laughs) physics Don't worry, I know. I just wanted them to hear your course of study before they would think you studied <laughs> MBA or, or something like a business uh, administration. Uh, yeah, I studied physics. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so um, was... what about the core? Okay. Okay. Continue. Yeah. I, I can hear I you. Stopped. I knew that I needed something. I needed something that could could afford me my time and yeah. give me the, the, the leisure and help me maximize other potentials that I had. You understand? Okay. I knew getting a job mm. nine to five wasn't going to help me achieve. And for some reasons, I, I was finding it difficult to apply for a job after school. I, I saw that I needed something. I knew that the types, the types were changing. The yeah. things were changing, and I knew that I needed something more. And today I'm mm. really grateful for it. Because uh, I'm really glad I made that decision. And okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, now going further into your st- your journey, still. Um, yeah. You you began trading forex what year actively? Okay. I, I started 20, 2017 September. Active. Okay. Okay. Active. Actively, yeah, but I, before then, yeah. did you have some experience and all of that? No, not really, not really. Okay. I, my my elder brother is to is to is to come from the barracks then. And okay. He has, when he has short breaks, he he comes down with his PC and then most of the time he he just turns on his PC and say, "Help me close, click here when you this thing here. Help me click here when you see yeah. here." That was way back, two thousand and eight. 2000. So Whoa. I was, yes, I would sit down with his PC. He would go out and then he would call me and say, Help me close this thing when it gets here. I never knew what he was doing, but yeah. he comes back and asks him, What exactly is this? And he'll say, Don't worry, don't worry. I'm making a lot of money, man. I make stuff like that. And so I, I got curious and then, you know, 
it, it, I had that memory. I had that memory. Yeah. And I was still yeah. thinking of that thing he was doing. Because at some point, mm. he became actively, very actively, actively working with, with the military. Okay. And so we didn't have that time to really communicate, yeah. to really talk. And so while I was in uni, he would just call me and ask how I was doing, that stuff like that. In fact, while I was while I, while I got my admission, I stole his meta trader. I didn't know what a meta trader was. I took it okay. from his PC with a flash, he did it in my bag, mm. and then went to school. That's when I got my mm. shot. And so every, yeah, okay. every time when I'm just alone, I just put it on. I didn't even know it required just to see what's up. internet connection. I just look at it. And that's how it happened for years as until okay. I really got to discover what it really was. And then 20, yeah. 2017, we kicked up. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. And now in the real forex journey itself, um, how has it been? Wins, losses, all of it together. How have you been able to deal with the whole journey? Um, has it been win all the way? Has there been ups and downs? Has it been, how has it been like? Okay, well, I, I just just like it is in life, we have highs and lows, highs and lows. Yeah. But the most important thing is if that, that that's how it is on graphs. Lows, <laughs> exactly. The most important <laughs> factor here is if the highs and lows are actually taking you to your desired nation. Yeah. So in, in as much as there 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 are a lot of of highs and lows happening in the market, you get personally as a trader. Mm. Mm. It, it has still pushed me further to get to improve on my skills and and try to build on my intellectual property and maximize the potentials that are actually inside of me. So at size just just my 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 personal work work with trader i i do a lot of research i take a lot of trainings like a lot of trade a lot of trades you get to yeah. know my skills so personally the the growth has been progressive but i won't lie to you that it has just been a smooth run you get it has been highs okay. and lows highs and lows but it has been tilting towards the height towards the up so we we've been bullish. yeah so upside far. yeah we've been bullish mm. so far so we're making great progress. Great progress. Fantastic, fantastic, yes. fantastic. Yes. Good yes. to hear. Um, we'll come back to more of that. I believe as we're going, you'd be using, we'll be using some of your personal experiences as okay. examples. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so the next question I want to ask. Um, trader and investor in the Forex industry. Um, okay. You know, there's this thing. Yes, okay. Let me bring it down, down, down. What what differentiates a trader and an investor in the forex industry? In the last forex oh, itself. Oh, okay. Well, I, I think a trader, a, a trader is someone who who is involved consistently in a high risk practice. You get okay. a high risk practice. Yet why and he he he's going to be involved in buying and selling of investments at a specific duration within a frequent volatility period. You understand? So, but I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, but yeah. So just break it down a bit. <laughs> uh, okay, a, a trader actually is just the the re a, a, a a guy who is involved in a high risk practice. You know buying and mm. selling of investment within a specific okay. period of time. Yet okay. relying on volatility. You get relying on volatility right. of prices, fluctuation of prices. So he wants to take mm. advantage of those volatility involved in the market. So that's okay. what the trader is. He wants to buy and sell mm. investment within a specific period of time. You get so that's why we have mm. traders, swing traders, you get. So depending on what yeah. category you fall in. So a trader is just one who buys and sells assets within a specific period of time. It could be within a day, within two days, within, within you get. Why an investor is one who puts his money 
or as a as a matter of trust gives his money to a trader mm. gives his money to or invests his money in an investment platform in hope that he will be able to generate a a larger profit or la okay. a larger returns at the end of the day you understand mm. so in the future you yeah. can, so he is one who has he doesn't do all of the activities he doesn't execute he doesn't he's not the one taking the high risk practice here so he's yeah. the one who invests his money an investment platform in hopes that mm. he will get a larger return or benefit in the future so more or less That's a transfer of risk exactly to, to someone else trader. to make yeah to make so it's more of yeah. trust a, a, an investor looks for trust and yes. um exactly. reliability of a trader while the exactly. trader is the one looking at the markets and executing the exactly. trades and doing all the day-to-day -day stuff decisions based on his experiences and his superior information mm. okay 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 so um all right so that means in the industry, there are those that are going to be full-time players that are playing the trade or trading the market or trading the exactly. assets directly. And there would also be those who are um, backing up or funding or providing leverage to the traders. Exactly. And we can call those kind of people investors, right? Okay. All right. So um, exactly. there's something very important about... Or I think we should just take a few questions so that we keep everybody in the game right then we'll come back to okay. the already preset questions right. uh, i want to All go right. through some of the questions people have asked let me see if i can scroll down to them all right the very first question says so those pl so those platforms how can we find reliable ones i guess the person is talking about um um brokers or something of that nature because i think when you were defining forex you're talking about platforms that bring people opportunity to buy and sell so I guess he's talking about reliable broker platforms. Talk about brokers and platforms, please, a bit. Okay, okay. So a a, bro a broker is either a an a broker is, is is an organization or a a structure put in place where traders can put their money and they provide mm. liquidity for you to trade your money yourself you understand okay so that, that's 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 what a broker a broker actually offers you liquidity they offer they offer you a a platform for you to invest your money and grow your money yourself so those, okay those, those those are brokers so first first of all before you before you decide on on picking a specific broker you you have to check if these guys actually regulated you get if they have okay. their, their 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 offices registered you get mm. you have to do with the financial board you get okay. financial boards the cfas you get you have to ensure that all of these these criteria are met you understand mm. and over time you you also have to study study those who are successful and find yeah. out what exact what what brokers they use exactly you get yeah. a, a, a yeah. broker will provide spread for you. A broker provides mm -hmm. platform for you. Provides platform, provides liquidity, and all of this you get. So, in trying to select a specific broker, you have to find out from who has been in this system, who has done yeah. this for your while, to be able to guide you and then point you to tell you that okay, this is a broker that can be yeah. trusted. And so, so in essence. Um, the, one of the best ways to find a broker is to probably ask the person who is mentoring or guiding you or whatever platform exactly. you're learning from for exactly. who they recommend in, exactly. in essence. Yeah, because it's not a good exactly. thing to go into the Forex space without being guided generally. Exactly. All right, next question is, um, in your opinion, what's the best software for trading Forex? That's a word. Well, the... it's up to you best software for trading forex okay best software okay you you have there are any of them out there you have trading view 
Although Trading View mm-hmm. is just a platform that 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 gives you, a, a, it just provides chatting tools. Provide okay. chatting tools. You just have your candlesticks, your 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 tools for for chat. You you can't actually use the trading. You know, so, some guys cannot understand candlesticks. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me let me just try coming. You know those graphs that you'll be seeing plenty, plenty things in hand. Anything. Well, you know once you just talk about forex, you start seeing graphs. So trading view gives you access to those kind of graphs that have stuff, 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 stuff like this. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So what other software um, can we? Would you say? Oh, okay. We have we have C Trader. Okay. We have C Trader. We have X Trader. If you, okay. can, if you can use C Trader, the issue with C Trader is that you don't have C, you don't have every broker providing you C Trader, providing mm. you with the C Trader platform. So, okay. you, for those that provide the C Trader platform, I think uh, I can recommend it for you. They 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 have okay. very very good platforms for you to trade. Then mm. you have your MT4, MT5. That you always find those are the conventional ones you find in every yeah. broker, but they are still very yeah. sophisticated tools like the C Trader, I use C Trader, and okay, you can get on FX Pro. I use FX Pro to trade. I also use Tio Market. Tio Market provides okay. MT4, MT5. I use F- FX Pro. I use C Trader for my FX Pro. So okay. I think for now, fantastic, no, fantastic. That, that great. Yeah. Okay, that's great. We'll take one more question before we hit back. Um, God bless you, man. Oh, this is somebody blessing you, sir. Amen. <laughs> um, all right. Let me see if I can get the next question. How can someone get um, courageous to continue resuming? To continue or resume trading after a huge loss. <laughs> that's that's quite an interesting one. <laughs> okay. Now, 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 I, I, I <laughs> it's quite an interesting question because when it comes to losses, I, mm. the the way I was trained or the way we were trained, so the the. I was always careful about making specific kind of losses. You get yeah. so I'll tell you the truth, I've never really had that hit in the market where it may be like a like a very like a very huge loss like, like blown you know, account. Exactly. You get so I've had yeah, it, it all depends on the amount you're trading. It's very easy mm. to blow a hundred dollars, it's very easy to blow a two hundred dollars. You get but when it now involves you trading a three thousand dollars, four and five thousand dollars, and then you lose all of that, it, it might take you some extra kind of of ginger to come back in. You get so yeah. I yeah. personally the way I grew myself and the way I was guided was to always start with a very specific capital mm. and learn to be consistent at it. So we started with like a hundred bucks, a two one hundred and fifty bucks. Started to develop yeah. our consistency and started to add add to our capitals, and then gradually kept building it, kept building it, and kept building it. So even if mm. I'm going to make a loss with a one hundred and fifty dollars, it's it's not going to hit me like when I'm five thousand dollars and I have, let's say, I I, I trade a a a $150 and I'm losing a 20%. That's like $30. Well, let's say I'm losing yeah. or I'm like 50, 50, 50 dollars out of that. That's like mm. that's like maybe 25% you get. So yeah. if I'm risking if if I'm losing percent from a five thousand dollar account, that, that's gonna be that's gonna be a huge hit hit on me. Huge. You understand? Yeah. You get so it, it when when you want to trade it's always advisable when you're when you're starting out always start with a specific even if you have three million ten million in your account mm. you get your you're just starting a new phase start yes. with a 
when you get consistent, you make a hundred percent. Add it, add another hundred bucks. You get yeah. When you get consistent, add another hundred bucks. A time will come. Mm. You will know when and go and start taking higher capital because the psychology of trading a two hundred dollars is actually different from trading two thousand dollars. Yeah. And most times we, we think our capital is the issue. It's truly not the issue. It's the process. Mm. It's the process. Mm. So learn to start building a very small amount of money, 100, 200 bucks, then scale okay. up in that order. Again. So, so, so if, if someone has gone bust, your basic advice is that if they're coming back, start out with a small account. And focus on the numbers. Yeah. yeah, hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. Focus on percentages. Focus on yourself. On mm. yourself. You get focus on yourself. The process. The process. Yeah. Focus on yourself and the process. Get get to learn and understand the system you're working it. Focus on yourself. Yeah. Focus on your on understanding your weaknesses, your emotions, your psychology. These are all the 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 the, the things that have to be put in place before you can now start thinking of scaling up. So it's good yeah. that when you come back with a very small, decent amount of money and then focus on the process. All right. All right. Thank you so much. I think that's a fantastic answer. If this Thank is making so much sense, please let us know in the comment section that this is making so much sense, that you're learning so much. Uh, we'll go back to our already predefined questions. And we'll continue from there. So there's a new, there's a there's a big question or big um, topic uh, whenever it comes to high risk assets. The next thing is the word risk. Whether high risk, low risk, whatever it is, there's the word risk. And risk is something that is very very um, common with the forex market or any financial trading um, industry. However, I think many people don't get the concept of risk. So can you please um, explain risk, the concept of risk in Forex and um, how it applies to the trader and how it applies to the investor, somebody who is giving out money to somebody else to trade for them. How does it play out? Let's start with the trader. Okay. So, so basically, the term risk actually... actually means like one being involved to danger you get mm. when you talk about risks it, it, it gives you a a an assumption or a a a perspective exposed to danger you understand mm. so when when it comes to trading when we're talking about risks it means that at any point in time we might be losing our entire investment so in other words, yeah. we, 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 we are not coming into the system with, with a 100% guarantee or 100% assurance that we're going to be getting everything we invested in or every mm. other investment and getting back our returns you get or profit yeah. like you get. So there's, there's, there's the tendency that we might be losing everything involved. You understand? So... Mm. Just as it, it, as the word stands, risk is it, all. It, it, it tells us that we are exposed to danger. So, as a trader, there there, there is a risk. As a trader, when when there is a lot of assumption, you get. Mm. I won't just come as a trader any day and just tell myself that this is going to buy and this must buy. You understand? So there, there's this common assumption with with the with the no risk trader. A, a trader generally who who is in the system you get and this is as a result of of not having incorporate quality informations in your trading you understand mm. so they, there's usually a lot of assumptions involved so and this is when you don't incorporate quality information so there's always risks to the trader or risks from the trader's angle when there is so much assumption when they you know, yeah. incorporate quality information mm. and you've not had time to study your personality. Trading is 10%. Mm. Okay, some people will say 50% skill, 50% psychology. But I think 
in training is 20% skill and 80% mm. psychology. You understand? Oh. A trader who, yeah. who, was, who, who is having a terrible day would, would definitely not perform as expected. You understand? Yeah. So th these are some of the situations. So a trader, there's always a risk to a trader's dimension mm. when he does, when he, he has a lot of assumptions. And this is due to the fact that he doesn't incorporate quality information in his trading skills. You understand? Then yeah. the, the, there's also the aspect of not understanding your psychology, your part, yourself. You understand? Not understanding yourself. Yeah. So when you understand yourself, when you have enough knowledge about yourself, about about you, about the the whole technical aspect, I think you have less risks involved. You understand, as a trader. Yes. 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 So so when okay. It, when it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. For the investor now. Exactly. Exactly. So for for the investors, I think <laughs> why a lot of investors get to to be at fall victims of of a lot of of endangered zones or gets <laughs> i don't want to start calling for the names you get yeah a lot of investors get exposed themselves to a lot of high risks is because most of the time they've not taken out a lot of research you get to okay. find out to find out those organizations, all those companies, all those individuals that have yeah. sustained um, the consistency in their reproducing their results mm. over a specific period of time. So a lot of times, traders, investors have been exposed to a lot of high risks when they have not taken out time to make a lot of research. Research. Yeah, on who so they are giving. The, the other guy now asked about how you can find credible brokers and stuff like that. So you need to be guided. You need to always yeah. be guided when you're coming into the financial industry. You get the, the industry is very brutal. Yes. Very brutal. There are, there are investment platform where you, you stick a lot of money into, mm. into them and Without being remorse, they take your money and tell you to your face, like, to hell with you. You get, so you need to yeah. really make research. So they, there are a lot yeah. of offers right now. You see a lot of them out there. But I think where, where an investor puts himself put himself in, in a high risk is when he doesn't take out time to make a lot of research, check the person, okay. the companies, the organization's consistency, and their mm. ability to reproduce results over a specific time, and then the percentage offers that they present. You understand? Okay. That, that, yeah. I think that, that takes us to the next question, um, especially from the investor, because some people here may not particularly want to go into trading themselves. Um, some people would be looking towards um, being investors in the Forex space. You get and as you already rightly said that will involve a lot of research a lot of research into the background of the company how long they've been how long they've been playing the space how long um how track their record. performance has been their track record over the years yeah and then okay so i want to ask now um, something similar but quite different how do you spot unrealistic offers and how do you spot realistic offers on a general note now of course everybody will still have to go back and do their own assignment because there's no way uh, nobody nobody wants to be liable for anyone's uh, exposure <laughs> to danger right so but then what, what are key pointers to tell us um, what realistic forex offers look like what realistic companies offering um services of such nature look like because you are you're a player in the space you're in the back end of what makes the money for those forex trading companies so you would have insight into when somebody is trying to bamboozle people <laughs> all the way and so give us some ideas some clues one two three four five you get clear cut okay. um signs that we can know that an, a an offer is realistic and the one is shady oh okay so when, when we want to talk about 
when we want realistic offers now, we, we, one of the first pointers we start looking out for is the track record. What is okay. the track record? At least before you get into investing, why, why do we have so much confidence in, in putting our money in the banks and having so much confidence that we can get that money back? Because we've seen a track yeah. record over a period of time. You get, although first, first bank celebrating hundred years, now. right? <laughs> exactly. So a lot of yeah. people are getting into to to in getting the awareness that okay, trading is something that we can do and we can be able to use to to earn extra income. And so we have to check check the the track record of such pinnings or such organizations, at least. A, a, a company who have lasted for at least two to three, two to three years, you get, you can, yeah. you, 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 at that, at that point in time, seeing their track record, you get, can, can, can make you want to consider them. Also, aside okay. from that, you have to check the, the percentage payout they are offering you. Mm. You have to check the percentage payout they are offering you, you know, uh, when, when it's realistic, when you talk with big time, when you when we talk with big time investors, when you talk to yeah. those who, who are who are really hedge fund traders, who are institutional traders, when you have conversations with these guys, okay, like tell, what 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 characterizes a hedge fund trader? Like how many thousand dollars or million dollars do you think? So that the, so that people have perspective, you know, some people think it's two hundred <laughs> two hundred dollars <laughs> or ten thousand a hair, so that they understand oh, oh. the difference. Oh, okay. When, when you're dealing with institutional, when, you, when you're talking with, yeah. when you're dealing with institutional trading, investment, and all that, you you at least be be consider minimum of fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand okay. dollars at as at at most ten thousand dollars, at most. At least. You get, at least. Sorry, at <laughs> ten thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. Yes, at least ten thousand dollars. So you get so that's that's basically it so when 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 you're not the same companies offering you offering you offers like bring your hundred thousand bring your fifty thousand will help you make five hundred percent in two weeks month you know there, there are certain percentages that are not just realistic you get mm. you get when someone is telling you that bring your two hundred thousand will make it one million in the next one month it, it doesn't make any sense if that yeah. guy could do that he he would not be talking with you he would not be at any point having that conversation with you yeah <laughs> <be> so we lost <laughs> and, or, and eating you know, and eating all the money in fact he, he should step into a bank collect a loan of 10 million now put his family's house on exactly. on collateral and, and use the money and triple it and live his sweet life. <laughs> exactly. Go to one island and really have fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So mm. then you get so mo most times again, when, when you see the kind of percentage you get, you have to check the risks involved because they will always tell you never risks. The can never never risk an amount you can't afford to lose. Yeah. And so when you're having a conversation with any of these companies, these individuals, find out the risk involved. You understand when okay. they are telling you that you you are going to be risking of your capital, man. Walk your way. Walk mm. your way. Walk your way. You understand? So okay, that means what you're saying now is that. There's a way. There's a way. There are offers that help you know how much of your capital you are risking. Yes. Yeah. In, okay. In trading, okay. In, in, when it comes to trading now, when it comes to trading, mm. you get investing with trading companies. You know, they are yeah. always setting risks attached to a capital. You understand? Yes. So when you're bringing, when you're investing a thousand dollars, for instance, that that company, you may you may put your capital at. At the twenty percent risk to any risk okay. of fifteen percent or seven or twenty percent monthly. So, parameter mm. if everything goes otherwise, but, you you still have an eighty percent of your capital secured. Okay. Understand. Okay. So, mm. I, I think these these are 
so much. I think this is a very, very important point you just made. The fact that you're able to control how much exposure you have while yes. going into agreement with a company or an individual so that the person is um, bind, binded by an agreement not to lose more than a certain percentage of your entire capital at exactly. under no circumstances because no matter what you're trading, there's always stop loss. Yes, once in a exactly. blue moon, it can be, it may not be honored, but largely speaking, there, there are several ways, except the person is crazy. So yeah. please, everyone watching, that's something you should put in, uh, at the back of your mind. It doesn't matter the company. Most people would want to tell you, what if somebody is offering you 100% guarantee on your money coming out? How about that? 100% guarantee. Well, I think every, every knowledgeable trader, every mm. knowledgeable trader knows that if he of if he tells anybody that he's going to scare them he's going to scare them mm. you get so True. if i walk up to you if i'm a very knowledgeable trader who has grown with the system of course I'm, yeah i've already attained a point where i can now start trading for people before i can now start presenting myself to them so the over time i should have learned that when i present this kind of offer to them mm. people people in as much as a lot of people have greed and all of that but it did not it is not wise it's yeah to even say that you understand so if someone yeah. is giving me that kind of guarantee i'm going to run away from that person you get because okay. i know what yeah. the system is like so I know it's yeah like you should run away from that kind of person too mm. so you heard it right if somebody is telling you 100 percent guarantee your money is coming back you should be, especially if the person is putting your money fully into the Forex market, 100%, then <laughs> that person is may not be fully knowledgeable or is trying to um, take advantage of your ignorance of how the system works. Because like anybody who plays buying and selling, um, some years you buy beans and you keep in your house over mm -hmm. six months, hope it to go up which it always does every other year but one year mm -hmm. it might not go up that exactly. one or it might go up at a later time than you already than you planned meanwhile you had to exactly. sell it at a loss mm -hmm. pending mm -hmm. because you needed the cash at that moment or because the time exactly. for payment already came up so stuff like that so always think of forex trading like any other trading and um that's exactly. something that would be of advantage to you exactly. okay i exactly. think that's that um, we'll take a few more questions again, and then I don't know if you're able to see the questions in the chat. In the chat comment section below, you can't. Oh, you're not seeing nothing. Interesting. Uh, so I'll just guide you through all of it. Okay. Um, let me see. Do you have any suggestions on investment platforms? Okay. Currently. <laughs> Currently, there are a few I know, but I will not be mentioning their names because I'm still checking those <laughs> criteria as I mentioned. <laughs> yeah, right. Nobody wants to be yeah. held accountable for anybody's exposure to danger. But of course, exactly. yes. Exactly. So I'm okay. still personally checking out those criteria as I mentioned. I'm checking okay. Their okay. I'm checking out mm. their, their track record. I'm checking out their their. Their, their offers, if those offers mm. are actually realistic, you understand? Mm. So I, I'm watching them for a while, so I don't want to mention them now, but I'm actually I'm actually st still watching, watching and looking out for them. Mm. Okay, okay. So there are a couple of platforms you have in mind, but for now you choose to keep that yes. uh, private. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right. So yeah. that's it. You have to go do your research probably um, go do your research. Actually, that's what you can get. Or probably you private message him, and then you have exposure to risk by yourself. Exactly. Right. <laughs> All right, let me see. A trader is so, okay, let me see. So one said, oh, let me just even be clicking on it and bringing the questions up to the screen. All right. I don't know if you can see that now. Yeah, I can. How does one find and know an intelligent trader? 
Well, when is intelligent trader? That's that's an interesting keyword because anyone who trades has to be intelligent. Okay, it has to really be mm. intelligent. So when, when I don't know if you're looking for some sort of extraordinary kind of trader, but I think anyone who gets his hand into the trading system has to be intelligent. So I think every trader is That's intelligent. Trade. Okay, I think the question is levels. Mm, moving towards more profitable levels. trading. <laughs> exactly. So, well, I think it, your question still boils down to to making your research. You understand? Mm. Making your research. Mm. That you first start searching from the in, from from the the guys offshore. What I mean is, you search for successful traders overseas you get okay then you get they, they always tell us when we are looking out for for mentors we look for five best outside the country we look for five best within the country we look for five best within our searching within our geographical location then we can yeah. also look for the five best nearest to us you get yeah so this is going to take you a lot of time but it's definitely going to be worth it. You have to make your research. Mm. Go online, go on YouTube, go on Facebook. All these platforms are available. You, you go online, you, yeah. buy, you watch for a season. You watch mm. for a while. You don't just see some kind of result and then and then you just feel like, okay, because you saw it yeah. once, then you assume this guy must be the killer. You understand? So you have to watch for a season. Watch the track mm. record, watch the consistent the consistency for a while, and then you can yeah. know when to trust that person. So okay. how to find one is by making your research. All right, I think I think something else we should um, we should be convenient uh, or should I say comfortable asking traders whoever is making an offer, you should be comfortable asking the trader for their performance over the years or over the sure. months, if you really want to invest sure. or if they're making a request for investment, I don't think it's something that they should be. If, if you have good performance, you'd be proud. I mean, if you have scored, if you have sure. uh, won five gold medals, you should be proud to say, this is what I've done exactly. over the years. Uh -huh. so, so also, if you meet a trader and they are not comfortable sharing you their performance, it's something you should be wary of. Okay, they say they've been yeah. trading for 10 years or 20 years. Okay, are there proofs or results over the years? So that you, in case, especially when they're the ones offering, if you're the one looking for them, it's different. I think they might be, they might have more rights to say, no, I didn't, exactly. why, why are you asking me? Exactly. But if, you're the, if they're the one offering right. you an offer, then you should ask them to say, okay, what, what and what? Be very okay asking anybody making an offer to yes. you for, it's called due diligence, generally in investments. It's called due diligence, getting all of this information. I just thought we should chip that in somewhere there. Okay, yeah. next question uh, says, what role does mentorship play in trading? How has your mentorship journey been and with who? Okay, great question. Well, mentorship plays a, a, a lot of role in in helping a trader become successful you get mm -hmm. a, a mentor is someone who 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 carries you along the way i'm checking out their track record i'm sorry i'm having an issue yeah okay go on yeah so a, a mentor is actually someone who 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 carries you along and teaches you the process without having you go through all the past experiences or past pains they had to go through. You understand? Yeah. So he cuts away the pain mm -hmm. and then teaches you the process and then helps you navigate through through all of all of the pathways in such a way that you, you end up becoming very successful. So mentorship has a very key role in helping a trader become very, very successful. So I think any person okay. who's going to be very interested in trading who's one who wants to get deep into the industry has to be mentored has to be mentored mm. and so for me my journey my my journey has been really great you know having 
having a mentor over me was has been one of the things that has really helped me and has brought me this far. You know, I never mm. make any decision without asking my mentor. I always mm. ask, no matter what it is. And that has really helped me. He got to a point yeah. where he said, I'm, 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 I'm really glad you're someone who asks a lot of questions because yeah. that, that has really, really, really helped me. Really, really helped me. So uh, but it, it has, mentorship has truly, truly transformed my, my journey and has really helped me stay consistent and helped me stay, mm. stay very profitable. Fantastic. Okay, so um, it's already uh, past 10. And so we'll just go through the questions uh, much more rapidly. And if there's any repeating question, we'll just skip over it. Next question says, before we go back to our main line of questions, what's your take on currency pairs versus volatility indices, which is a bit safer to trade considering risk to return, risk to reward ratio? Uh, I think it's a very technical oh. question, uh, but I think it can be answered yeah. quickly. Whoever is technical gets the yeah. answer, and there's no need going too deep. Oh, okay. It is it, a very straight question. I'll, I'll just say, for all right. Us, I, I don't need to. I don't need to. You you can hit me up later on, and we can talk about it. But I I always choose forex over indices because forex is scalable. Forex is very mm. scalable. But volatility is 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 a synthetic market. That 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 means at any point in time, this this market can be influenced. You understand? So there, there are a lot of things involved with this question. So, but I I, I would choose forex any day, any time. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um. Next question. Uh. I think. How do you decide which to focus? On currency pair, okay. I think you already mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, preferably the forex market. Uh, well, so you can go read more about currency pairs volatility indices if you're having no clue what we're talking about. Uh, let me see. Next question says, sir, do you learn your trading skills and develop methodology based on a single mentor? Um. Well. When, when it comes to mentorship, um, you, you, you might need to explore from, from several mindsets, you understand? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you need to be guided. I have just one mentor, but I have many teachers, you understand? Yeah. So, yeah. So my mentor has helped, has guided me to know what courses to go for, what trainings to go for, you get, and... In as much as he is my mentor, he still recommends some other great trainings or other other stuff that he feels might still help me on my journey based on his experience. Yeah. You understand? So so yes. you need to explore a lot of education to really Okay, I think we're having a little glitch. Okay, you're back already? Yeah. All right, final question, and I jump back to uh, the core of our line of questions. Even so, are there, are there periods or seasons that are not good to trade, e.g. ember months? Are they good for trading? And um, these are very technical questions, so just give one yeah. line answers. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah, this is a technical question, so I can't, I'll have to, it'll take me a while to start explaining all of the, the, the systems around this, but they, I, if you check my, they, there was a time I posted on my Facebook page, I, I shared best months to trade. You can Google it as well. Just say, you, okay. you can Google it best months to trade. You'll find it online. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So back to our main line of questions. Um, I want to ask something now that is not very um, popular. Okay, so is trading a job? <laughs> very interesting and a technical question. Well, trading that's why I'm here, right? 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Trading is not a job in the sense that it, it, it doesn't offer you fix or it doesn't offer you a fix or a regular income. You understand? Mm. Trading should be a, a secondary source. You get oh, so okay. The entire mm. goal of trading is to help you build your asset base, to help you mm. build what has come from whatever this, whatever job, whatever you do. So the entire goal of trading is to help you build that asset, that asset base. Oh, okay. You okay. Understand? So trading is not a job. Trading should be be like a secondary source. It's not a job. It doesn't yeah, afford more or less a business. A, a fixed exactly. It doesn't offer you a fixed income at every but you know your job just like you have your regular jobs at the at the end of the month you mm. know, fixed pay you're happy mm. you take out time to you can, so trading doesn't give you that 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 luxury okay okay fantastic all right then so um still around that um line of thought okay you, you mentioned something very very key you said um it's more or less a vehicle for growing your asset meaning something is bringing in um, some amounts of money or you've made money from somewhere else or you're making, you have another business which is offering people um, the ability to grow their own assets, right? In a sense, or whether you're training or whatever you're doing that is bringing in money, then you as a trader, you're actively um, growing the money because, so, exactly. so that, that's a very... That's a very um, important point you just made because um, it, it goes to show that it makes sense that you have another source of income or something that grows your capital meanwhile you trade. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. So it's not advisable okay. to even leave your job to want to become a full-time trader. So oh, okay. if you want to do that, you must have checked your consistency. You must have checked hmm. the kind you must have you must have gotten a level of capital mm. to trade. You understand? Because okay. those are some of the things mm. you, you have to check. So you have to now have other source of income before you can leave your job. So it's even advisable for a trader mm. to have other source of income. And if you're thinking of leaving your job, maybe, you know, a lot, there's this, there's this deception. But I think it's a bit tricky because many traders feel they are not profitable because they have something else doing. Mm. And then they want to leave that to want to trade full time. And they find out that they yeah. really stop. Things become worse. Yeah. You get yeah. So it's very advisable mm. that you don't leave your job, have extra source of income because mm. your goal as a trader is to help you grow your money, grow your asset base, and then increase your portfolio. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Um, now, okay, one more thing. Yeah, talking about institutional trading, the whole idea of institutional trading, uh, more or less like a company or an investment platform giving you... Okay, just talk about institutional trading, institutional trading. <laughs> okay, institutional trading, it, it's, quite, it's quite an interesting one. You know, there are a lot of mysteries in, in, this, in this industry as a whole mm. you need to first know how how why the institutions trade you know mm. one of one of the ways one of the, the 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 activities of an institutional organization or a a bank organize a banking organization is is their ability to offer their loans you get offer their clients loans mm. they loan a lot of money to their clients and all of that and so you need to understand that at every point in time where these institutions loan, loan a lot of money to their client, they, they put themselves at risk. Mm. They put themselves at risk. And so the risk in, in, its, in, in the sense that these people, these clients who they are loaning their money to might not be able to pay back. And so they have to have a strategy of trying to offset that risk. You understand and that's where an yeah. institutional trader or an institutional trading the concept and the idea of institutional trading comes in so when you talk about institutional trading it, it's 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 a lot deeper than 
the way we think about it. So these guys like are the retail trained. You get these guys are actually trained to minimize risks as possible. You get someone oh, okay. who's going to be offsetting a risk of hundred billion dollars is definitely not going to be like the regular retail trader or have the same <laughs> skill level of a regular retail trader. So he's yeah. primarily dealing with how to minimize risks. You understand yeah. how to offset mm. some of these risks in order to be able to to balance things up. So all right, it's quite deep. Fantastic. Okay then, uh, let me see. I'll just run through if there are more questions. Please, if you have any questions, this is the best time to ask. Um, we'll be going offline uh, sometime around um, ten thirty. That would be making the whole video length to be an hour thirty minutes thereabout. So if you have any questions, this is the best time to throw it in, and we'll be going through them one by one. Okay. Um, someone says, please, is a return on investment of 20% for 25 working days reasonable enough? <laughs> 25 working days, well, I think it's a, it's a little bit aggressive. I okay. It's a little bit aggressive. I think a, a, and now it, it has to do with a kind of capital involved. You understand? Yeah. I, I think yeah. on any capital, 20% is a bit aggressive. Aggressive. So I'll I'll recommend I'll recommend just just me personally I'll recommend at least a seven to ten percent. That's per month in five working days there about. Yes, twenty five working days. Yes, if we're talking about right. 20 percent, we we might be looking at for three months, for three months, oh, okay. two months, and the likes. Yes, so just right. to keep your 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 capital safe and not at risk. All right, I think this question too has been answered by implication. Um, seven to ten looks good when it comes to um, yeah. every month. All right, any other question yeah. here? Can I see? Do you have? Do you have a platform where someone can learn the intricacies of forex? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can hit me up after now. <laughs> That you think you do. The only reason why you're here is because you do. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, let me see if there's any other question. Can I do forex trading as a career? Um, I think you can. You you can, but th this will have to do with with just like I said, asking me. On the last question, if trading is a job and stuff, you can actually take forex mm. trading as a career. But there are certain criteria that must be met before you can do that. You understand? Mm. So, yes, you can. Okay, I think that's largely um, the questions we have so far. So, please, if this is making so much sense and if you're getting so much value, let us know in the comment section. Um, we've covered most of the questions um, you guys have asked. And the questions we also want to ask um, in the event tonight. So if there's anything else you need clarification on, please ask in the um, comment section. Why me? I have my own personal question, sir. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, hot seat now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the capital of... Okay, that's it. <laughs> it's not who wants to be a millionaire. Right. Okay, um... As a trader now, you've been trading for quite a number of years. Okay, two questions then. First, do you personally offer investment of, um, like make investment offers to clients or not at the moment? Are you open to investment? Okay, well, it's mm. a yes or no answer. I, okay. I, <laughs> I might not want to really disclose the details well i do it on yeah a sure very, sure very personal level oh, okay yeah, I do okay it on fair enough personal level yeah so very personal level so i put off so yeah at, yeah at, at yeah. january and closed at october no oh, okay okay on a personal level very personal level of course it's very important because there are several worries that these guys in who <laughs> who just want to put you into a cage 
we just want exactly. to put somebody into a cage and just make them pass through pain. So it's, it's I totally understand. Uh, I'm asking because some people might want to reach out later and say, I want to give Sami or who are this. You get to like to be open that this is how it works. Um, so it's it's based on discretion. It's based on discretion that you take in offers if you must, if you ever do. Right. Something of that nature, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Then number two question. Um, yes, I'll be following you quite a while. Some people here don't know you from Adam. So what has been like your <laughs> craziest win as as a trader? Like your craziest win, craziest trade, craziest win? Um, something that blew even your mind up. Okay. I think okay. I think my my craziest win um, was I I think it was around was it was it April May this year. I put okay. it on my Instagram okay. page where where I made a two thousand percent within mm. a week or so. A two thousand percent of my equity within a week. Sick. Like it, it Sick. was like my most Sick. amazing. Yes, within a week, within five days, I made two thousand yeah. percent. Like he was very excited. Seriously. So yeah, yeah. I post. I posted the. Okay. Whole, I posted the proof and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I can still remember that. I can yeah. still remember that. You know, we were core full time followers of Money Making Men <laughs> MMM. <laughs> All right. So one more question <laughs> from me. If you have any question, please let us know. Oh. Um. Yes, okay. that we are seeing results, wins, wins, wins. Does that mean there is no loss? Because some people have this idea that if traders keep showing wins, it means there is n probably no loss. Or how 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 about that? How do, is it an average? Where does the where is the balance in the whole story of wins, especially in the in the forex industry? Oh, oh okay. Well, generally speaking, a a a, a few traders. A, a few traders I know have been able to, to come out openly to still talk about their losses. You get some people mm. don't feel comfortable doing that. You get, but I, I feel it, it's still it's all part of the process. There are always yeah. highs and lows in, in the whole business. So there are times mm. I post some of my, my trade performance and you can see five trades in blues and other three trades in big reds. You get, but at yeah. the end of the day, you find a submission of a, a, a profit. You get, yeah. You find yeah. at the end of the day, you see profit at the end of the day. So that's mm. so there, there are still highs and lows in the market. But if at the end of the day, at the end of the month, or at the end of the year, you come out being, you come out with your portfolio still being outstanding, then I think you're good to go. So there, there. Oh, forget about. Yeah. The blues, the blues, the blues. There are always losses here and there, but mm. and at the, the the end goal is that at the end of the day, you you are able to still make a percentage profit in return. Okay, okay. So I think that's a very critical thing because you know money is something that spikes emotions. So when people yes. just see all blues, they're like forex. No. Forex is like giveaway. So <laughs> it's, it's like give away, just go and oh, get your own cool. share. And so, <laughs> so everybody should jump in. So yeah, over that period, you, you can become um, very profitable, plus minus yeah. in the net. But when you talk about um, in, in, in the interim, there will always be ups and downs and most people share, yeah. share their wins. Just like any company, yeah. it's for marketing yeah. purposes. Um, exactly. so, <laughs> so, so, so we don't need to see all of the whole details of how, of course, like your Toyota car exactly. can be very ugly when in production, exactly. but they only show you the win that is looking good <laughs> at <Exactly>. the end. <laughs> all right. All right. So um, I think we are coming to the very end. One last question here. All right. How much can you pay? Not the amount, though, for a course as a trader. Um, I don't understand what that means. Is it a? Uh, does he want to? Do you want to learn from Sami, or are you looking to sell a course to Sami? <laughs> how much can he pay? Right. So probably <laughs> clarify that, and we'll be able to take that um, question properly. All right. So 
that said, um, I think I've been able to exhaust, and anyone who has been part of this event has been able to get um, insights. So thank you, Mr. Sami, for the awesome insight into Forex, into um, Forex trading. Please let us see your thank you. Thank you to Sami. Just put it up in the comment section if you've learned so much tonight, if you've really gained um, con um, context to the industry, to the business of Forex, please share it in the comment section. We just have a few minutes to be here before we end this live broadcast. So thank you, Mr. Sami. Uh, let me just try and thank do a so quick much. summary of some of the things we talked about. Um, we talked about his journey as a Forex trader. We talked about the whole concept of Forex at the beginning of the conversation. We talked about um, trader versus investor, where the trader, where he said the trader is the guy that does some hard things, chat and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so go back to the video and watch that part. And then the investor is the guy who gives money to the trader to trade. And then that's a summary of it. The next thing we talked about was um, the risk in forest. Risk being exposure to danger. That's the short meaning of risk. Exposure to danger. So we talked about exposure to danger or losses as a trader and that of the um invest or someone giving money to others then we talked about um the nature of realistic offers and how to spot shady stuff right and we, in the nature we try to talk about it being realistic in its percentage returns and you checking for track record of the investor doing your due diligence basically basically but that means that there are credible investment platforms out there that can give you a return using forex as the uh, as the vehicle or as the yeah financial vehicle for their product yeah. yeah then we talked a little bit about trading being a job or not but yes if you say there are those working for institutional um institutions who are trading as a job meaning right they are traders in the company and they are collecting salary those guys have a job right <laughs> <laughs> right um it's a it's a question comment Did you hear me? Okay, can you recap? Can you okay, I said there are traders in institutions who work uh, as traders, but they are on a job. They are collecting salary, right? So trading can yeah. be a job if yeah. you are working for an institutional trader or a huge firm. Exactly. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, okay. But of course, because it's, mean, it's more or less, the psychology is different from when you're trying to grow capital and when you're trying to minimize exactly. risk or hedge against exactly. currency yeah. True. Um, exposure. True. Fantastic. True. And then finally, we talked about the idea of institutional trading and all of that. And then we took so many insightful um, questions. So thank you all for being a part of tonight's meeting. Uh, let me see if I can call it a couple of names. Thank you, Mr. Ibrahim Olua. Damilare, Ezekiel, Olua, Toby, Adebayo, Silvanus, Christopher, Aaron, Ghana, Damilola, Abiodun, Golden, Uwogu, Israel, Olubade, Bernard, Sunday. Sorry, I'm spinning my head to view it on my <laughs> other screen. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining tonight. Thank you all. I believe you all had a great time. And we look forward to any other some other time where we would host Sammy, probably you do give away. Sammy, won't you do give away? <laughs> give us some dollars now. Give us dollars. <laughs> 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 all right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for participating tonight. And um, if you have any other questions after now, you can always reach out to Sammy if you want to go for his training in the Talk about, please, Sammy, just give us one or two, one or two minutes. Talk about your academy and one or two of your offers so that guys who want to um follow up with you can know what you have for them okay thank you for that um well my my green profit academy has several courses that that uh that you you can enroll for you know yesterday was our popular black friday and so i mm. gave a a series of offers for for people at a discounted price and so there are a couple of tra trainings you you can en enroll for that could kick up your your or could start up your your trading journey you understand i have i have an advanced course i also have a basic foundational training i have 
have you know there, there are a couple of them so i i think if you're truly wanting to to take your journey to another level i think it would be best for you to to start up with my advanced course you get okay. it's quite different from others but I, i'll recommend it for anyone any day all right all right so you can always follow him on facebook instagram at sammy matt um where else again basically facebook instagram i think primarily uh yeah, facebook instagram primarily all right yeah, then facebook, so instagram. okay okay so thank you all for tonight and have a fantastic week and and uh, enjoy your day enjoy your night thank you so much mr sam we really thank appreciate you, you. We, we really appreciate your thank time you yes Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. All right, then. So good night, everyone. Have a fantastic evening ahead.